Well, new emails uh, from Hunter Biden suggest the first son uh, has always tried to sell access to his famous father. And by the way, you know, other people now, Sarab, are late to the party. Um, I will say hat hats off to Politico and, and Ben Schreckinger, who's written a book called The Bidens Inside the, Fam- the First Family's 50 Year Rise to Power, confirming some of your reporting. And that now, I guess, has given some in the mainstream media permission to finally admit that you had it right all along. But they're not exactly falling on their swords, are they? Yeah, no, um, Megan, thanks for having me on. I should just at the outset clarify that um, I helped run the opinion pages, so I was not responsible for the reporting, the amazing reporting into the Hunter files that yeah, uh, my colleagues on the, the post. Side brought forward. Yeah, exactly. Um, but um, uh, uh, look, I mean, it's um, the Johnny Come Lately attitude about this is frankly enraging from the point of view of people in our newsroom, um, because at the moment when it really mattered, when you had the kind of the entire big tech uh, intelligence community, the whole establishment coming against us, not just coming against us in words, but in genuine using coercive power, censoring us, uh, reducing circulation on our articles on Facebook, banning our Twitter account, even banning our readers from sharing uh, our Hunter Biden reporting uh, uh, in their direct private messages, let alone pu- posting them to their public feeds. When all of that was happening, this whole, uh, you know, with a few honorable exceptions, Glenn Greenwald, Matt Taibbi, a few others, the rest of the big media um, cheered the censorship, cheered calling it uh, misinformation without doing any reporting. And so, and, you know, the election had its outcome, and we don't know how it would have been affected had our reporting been brought in front of the uh, more of the American people, um, which it, they were barred from seeing it. So to, to say it now is it, so typical, uh, I think, of our elites and our establishment, where once um, the danger of some piece of reporting to the regime as a whole has been diffused and it's no longer a threat, then they'll come around and say, oh, yeah, maybe the New York Post had a point. Maybe we shouldn't have we shouldn't have called it misinformation without actually looking into this mm. Reporting. No, there's it, there's it no hurts. apology. <laughs> there's no soul searching. They're not sorry. So, I mean, maybe to their credit, they're not being disingenuous now. Um, let's talk about what specifically Politico and Ben in particular have managed to uncover that dovetails, confirms your own reporting. Because I, I can read it to the audience, but I think you can make it more clear. As I understand it, there's... Um, Okay, number one, a person who had independent access to Hunter Biden's emails confirmed he did receive a 2015 email from a Ukrainian businessman thanking him for the chance to meet Joe Biden. That's one. And the second is uh, same goes for a 2017 email in which a proposed equity breakdown of a venture with the Chinese energy executives includes the line, quote, 10 held by H for the big guy. This person that they spoke with recalled seeing both emails was not in a position to compare the leaked emails word for word to the originals, but the 10 held for H for the big guy was a big story out of your story because it seemed to allude to Hunter striking this deal with Chinese energy executives and would reserve 10% for the man who is now president of the United States. Yep. So um, we didn't need this confirmation. We're grateful for it, obviously. Um, But anyone who actually looked at our reporting instead of falling for the Russian disinformation hysteria that was promoted by critics of the Post, anyone who paid attention to our story and then the aftermath, including reporting uh, at Fox News, would know that those emails uh, were what we claimed they were. Um, So just to just to rewind just a little bit. Yeah. What we originally published and had banned by Twitter was emails that showed, as you said, that um, Hunter Biden seemingly arranged meetings between his father, then vice president of the United States, the second most powerful man in the world, and the Obama administration's point man on Ukraine on the one hand, and executives from a shady energy firm called, a Ukrainian energy firm called Burisma that was paying Hunter uh, upwards of $83,000 a month. 
And um, just a few points about this is that even at the time, and still today, neither Hunter nor his father did have, have flatly denied the authenticity of the emails Correct. that we put forward. Ever. And that would have, Yep, that would have been the easiest way to challenge it. It's all fake. There you go. Then, then it, the ball would have been in the, the post court. Um, so they, they not, and, and Hunter didn't even challenge the ownership of, a, of the of the laptop when he was pressed on it later by a television interview. He said it being coy. Um, and then we brought further confirmation of the of the uh, uh, Chinese transaction, which you alluded to, with a 10 percent held for the big guy um, through a business associate of Hunter's. Um, this guy, Babalinsky, who went on, mm -hmm. on the record and said, you know, I'm a Democrat. Um, he's a former uh, intelligence officer, credible guy, and said that these that those Chinese emails were authentic because he was he was in on those um, communications. So, you know, like I said, I, it wasn't that our reporting was unsubstantiated before until Correct. political came around. Um, it was per it was it was as substantiated as a story could get. And yet. The New York Times, even as recently as a week ago, called it unsubstantiated, and then they ninja edited their, their story without even correcting or anything. This is they ninja edited. Can you explain that? Because this is outrageous, and they have a pattern of doing this. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, there, there's just no basis for doing that. The the Federal Elections uh, Commission, we'll get to that later, but the Federal Election Commission basically said Twitter did not um, commit a kind of election law wrongdoing by suppressing our Hunter Biden story. Um, and in reporting that decision, the New York Times appended the adjective unsubstantiated to our reporting. What's What part is unsubstantiated? Right, right. what has fallen it. apart? Not even the small details, right? Like, uh, well, you know, it's not like we published the salacious content from the laptop, like Hunter with a, with with uh, crack pipes and so forth. We didn't do that to humiliate Hunter Biden, but to show that we had what we claimed to have. We had the laptop. It was real. Um, and none of that came under any real scrutiny. And in so far as it did, it's withstood all scrutiny. So what's mm -hmm. unsubstantiated? And then, Megan, you'll remember, compare that to reams of stories of the past four years published by left of center kind of prestige outlets, the likes of BuzzFeed and McClatchy and many others that did collapse under factual scrutiny. Supposedly, for example, um, President Trump suborning perjury from Michael Cohen um, mm -hmm. collapsed within a matter of hours. That story wasn't censored. And the New York Times doesn't refer to these types of reports as unsubstantiated without even claiming how it was unsubstantiated. It's all so underhanded, so base, um, <laughs> that it raises your blood pressure.